Well, I got to tell you, right now I'm one of those children running to hear a word from the Lord. I'm going to step aside and let you preach. Amen. Amen. God is good, and I really believe that tonight there has been a fine thread of, 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 of subject that God has spoken, and it's prayer and faith. Yes. And before I came here today, I wanted to hear from God because I'm not interested in just coming and preaching a message. I want to know what God is saying. Yes. And what God is saying today, and this is the title of the message, how bad do you want it? Because a lot of us want breakthroughs, but we don't want it bad enough. And what, what God right now wants to do a great work in our lives, wants to do a great work in our family, wants to do a great work with our children, wants to do a great work in our city. But the question is, how bad do we want that to happen? See, faith comes with persistence. Now, we, we don't have real faith if God gives us a word or he gives us a vision and we just give up on it when, it's, when it gets tough or it gets difficult. Your faith is being tested when you've heard a word from God and now the obstacles come. Now the resistance comes. Now the trouble comes. See, there's somebody here across the world and even here in this audience that needs a breakthrough. Right now you need deliverance. You need freedom. You're addicted. You're depressed. You're full of anxiety. And God is a God that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a God that can set you free. He's a God that can save you. He's a God that can heal you. But how bad do you want your freedom? Because, see, God will never give you freedom greater than your desire. See, your friend can't want it more than you. Your mama can't want it more than you. Your pastor can't want it more than you. You got to make up your mind that today I need my breakthrough. And you got to be persistent with it. See, I've learned this. We need to be more persi persistent than the devil. Amen. The enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy, and he's doing it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if we want to get set free, see, I'm going to say this. The days of just going to church for an hour, kicking back, clocking in and clocking out are over. Right now, we're in warfare. We're in warfare for our marriages. We're in warfare for our families. We're in warfare for our kids. And we're in warfare for our own sanity. And right now, it's so important to understand the principle of persistence. Amen. See, there's some victories that aren't going to happen overnight. There's going to be some victories that you're going to have to fight. It's going to be a bloody mess. But you got to let the devil know, you're messing with the wrong guy this time. You're messing with the wrong girl this time. You're messing with somebody that has a made-up mind. I'm living for God. I'm going all the way. Do what you need to do. But the last man standing is going to be God. See, we, we want great breakthrough, but... All the devil has to do is throw a little skirt by some of the guys, and you forgot your mission. We got too many Christians that don't know how to fight. This is a fight of faith. Let me show you the scripture. Let's go to Luke chapter 11. It says, then teaching them more about prayer. Now, who was teaching them about prayer? Jesus is teaching them about prayer. He used this story. Suppose, suppose you, want to, you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom. The guy don't even wake up. He stays in his bed. He says, don't bother me. The door is locked for the night, for the night, and my family and, are, uh, and I are in bed. I can help you, but I tell you this, though he won't do it for your friendship's sake, if you keep on knocking, if you keep on knocking, if you keep on knocking long enough, if you keep on praying 
long enough if you keep on standing, long enough if you keep on witnessing, long enough something's going to happen because of your persistence. There's a principle of persistence that God wants to teach us in prayer. We got so many times that we're praying, but we're not praying in faith. And the reason we're not praying in faith is because once we're done praying, we look around and see what's happening. You don't pray and then look around to see what's happening. You pray and then you believe that it's done and you keep on standing on what you prayed for, believing God has it all under control. And once he said it, it's done. But we need to learn how to pray. Like MC Hammer said, we got to pray just to make it today. And we got to learn how to pray. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for your friendship, if you keep on long, knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. You know what persistence means? It means to continue firmly, steadfastly, despite obstacles. See, God is not guaranteeing that you won't have obstacles. What he's saying is, as a matter of fact, you will have obstacles. And this illustration shows us three obstacles. The first obstacle was, no, don't bother me. You got to be able to hold on to the word of God even when everything around you looks like a big no. Because, see, the enemy is not going to give up territory easily. The Bible says this. I'm going to teach you another principle about warfare. The devil doesn't go until you make him go. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will... If you don't resist him, he's not going nowhere. That's why Jesus has given us power to cast out demons. There's some demons you got to evict out of your house. You got to evict out of your marriage. You got to evict out of your city. You got to evict out of yourself. But we got to learn how to resist. We got to learn how to stand. We got to learn how to persist. We got to learn how to fight even though there's what? Obstacles. I don't care how many no's I got. I know who my God is. My God's bigger than any no the devil could bring my way. God always has a bigger yes for every devil's no. I remember, I remember my, me and my wife, we have five little girls. But at this time, we only had one little girl. And my one little girl, her name's Abriana. And my one little girl, one day, we are out on vacation. And she got really weak. And we thought she had a cold. To make a long story short, we went to the doctors, and they put us in a little room. They checked her out, and they said this, we regret to inform you that your little daughter has leukemia. And I remember saying this. I told my wife, you know, we've been preaching faith our whole lives. But I'm going to tell you this, faith must be tested. I mean, it's it's fine to say you got faith, but your faith is not tested when everything's going good. Your faith is being tested when you're going through the struggles of your life. Your faith is being tested when you just got some bad news. And the Bible says, count it joy when you fall into diverse trials and tribulations, knowing that the testing of your faith will produce endurance or produce patience. And let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. What God is saying, you got to go through some trials because those trials mature you. They build endurance in you. You know what that word means? Persistence in you. Now, God, why does God need us to be more persistent? Because God has some heavy assignments for some last-day Christians. And right now, God is looking across the whole world, and he's wondering, who can I give an assignment to? Now, God knows. See, God is looking for, you know what he's looking for? Not talent. He's not looking for ability. He's not impressed with talent and ability because he gave you that. What he's looking for is some faith that I could give them something and they won't run when it gets hard. They won't back out when everybody else left them. They won't quit when they got a no. Guess what? Expect some no's, but keep on being persistent and those no's will turn into what? Some yeses. So I told my baby, I told my wife, we were in that hospital room and I had to make a declaration. Someone say, make a declaration. There's times in your life that you got to define the moment. Don't let that moment define you. You define the moment. I count it joy. The word count means lead. The word count means 
lead. And you know why the word count means lead? What he's saying is, don't let the circumstance lead you. You lead the circumstance. So I told my, my wife at that time, I go, baby, this is what we're going to do. We know that, that, that our God heals. So we're just going to go in that room, and we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're not going to sit here and cry all week long. We're not going to prepare for a funeral. We're going to prepare for a healing. We believe in God's word, and we can connect with God through what? Prayer. So I go, baby, let's pray about this thing. So we laid hands on my little baby, and when we laid hands on a little baby, I said, I, I talked to her. She's four years old. I go, baby, when we ask God for help, you know what he's going to do? He's going to help us. I go, baby, what is God going to do when we ask him for help? He said, help us. I go, so we're going to pray for help, and we're going to pray for healing right now, and we're going to believe that you're going to be healed right now, baby. So we prayed for healing. But after we prayed for healing, she got worse. See, you cannot go by circumstance. You cannot go by the report. There's some breakthroughs that you got to hold on just because God said it, and you got to believe it, and just be more persistent than the bad reports. Be more persistent than the trouble. Be more persistent than that devil that's trying to steal your family. Someone say, be persistent. So we were persistent. I'll tell you this. Within 30 days, there's another thing that happened. My wife was pregnant with my second daughter. And when she was pregnant, they had to do an emergency C-section on her. My other daughter's in the hospital with cancer. My other daughter right now is being born, emergency C-section. They, they come to me, the doctors come to me, and they said, she probably is not going to make it. She has a major heart defect. So now not only do I have one girl in the hospital, I got two girls in the hospital with a death sentence on them. Now, I, see, we have to understand, faith is not always easy. That's why they call it a fight of faith. You got to learn how to fight. And I remember the doctor. See, this was the next thing that happened here in this portion of Scripture. He said, the door is locked for the night, and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. And see, you have to understand that there's going to be times where it seems like everything's locked up. But I got some good news for you, that we serve the one that has the key to any, any door that's locked. And you see, he can unlock that thing and set you free. He can unlock that thing and deliver you. He can unlock that thing and give you what's behind that door. The enemy wants to tell you there's no access to what you prayed for. You know, that's what we call a, a fight of what? Faith. Faith. He's trying to put doubt in you. See, what the enemy's job is to convince you it ain't going to happen. He wants to convince you it can't happen. He wants to convince you that your prayer did not work. Just because you prayed and you didn't see a, a turnaround instantly does not mean it did not work. So we, we went in there. I'll tell you, I have two daughters in the hospital now. And I remember the doctor, she came up to me and she said, um, because she saw me walking around with the word. As I was walking around, you know why I'm walking around with the word? Because I'm, I'm in a fight. And I'm not going to be in no fight without no weapon. So I'm so... I'm loaded every because see, say, well, how do you use the word? I'm not talking about I just use the word and show the devil and try to, you know. What I do is I open up the word when doubt starts hitting me. And I, so I, get, I realign my thinking to what God's word said. And, and by his stripes, we were, were healed. The word of God says that he's able to raise us up from our sick bed. So I started reminding myself, I go, okay, I'm loaded up. I got faith now. Let's continue fighting. But she told me this. A doctor came to me. And you got to watch out that you don't get convinced with the people around you. You got to watch out who's hanging around you in the middle of your battle. Not everybody could be in the same room when you're fighting for your life. There's some people that you can't let in that room because they're going to mess with your faith. They're going to mess with your persistence. So what we did was she came up to me. and She goes, she saw me with the Bible. She said this, it looks like that's not working for you. How many know we're in warfare? How many know the devil use people to mess with you? Right in the middle of your warfare, he'll just throw a fiery dart, seeing if he'll get through. See, he's testing your what? Faith. He's testing your what? Faith. He's seeing, right? See, God is seeing, right? God will never give you more than you can bear. You guys understand that. So any trial that you're going through, count it a privilege because God is saying, I've given you the faith to get through this thing. Show this world how this thing works. Show them that I'm alive. Show them that I heal. Show them that I deliver. Show them that I fight. I, I love them. Show them. 
So we were sitting there, and I told her, baby, the, the doctor, I, I, you know, sometimes you got to get a little attitude in your fight. And I, and I tell her, I go, you know what? I know you're a doctor and all that, but I'm going to tell you this. God is going to have the last word, not you. Someone say, God is going to have the last word, not you. Look at this scripture. Last verse I'm going to read. And so, this is the principle he's telling you. Keep on asking. What did it say? Keep on asking. And you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking. And you will find. Keep on knocking. And the door will be open to you. Principle. Verse 10. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. So what he's saying here is, it's not going to work some of the time. It's going to work all of the time. He says, everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who keeps on, keeps on knocking, the doors will be open. Everyone, everyone who seeks will find. Now, why is that so important? Because I'm going to tell you this. Victory is at, right now is God, Jesus already done the work. But he needs to match up with our faith. He cannot do a work if we quit on it. He cannot finish a ministry he's called you to do. God right now is looking for someone that he could give a word to, that he could give a vision to, that he could give a ministry to, that they won't quit when it gets hard, but they will be persistent until it happens. See, I'm not, I'm, when God gives me a word, I, I don't say I hope it happens. This is what I say. This is going to happen. We're going to reach this city. My kids will be saved. This is going to turn around. So no matter where you're at, all over the world, in this room, we serve a God that's alive. And he loves you. And all you have to do is put your faith in him today. Maybe there's someone here that you need deliverance. You need freedom. You need a change in your life today. You're only a prayer away. All you have to do is receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Call on Jesus. And the word of God says very clearly, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That could be healing. That could be salvation. It could be a new beginning. And that word saved means whole. God wants to make you whole. So if you're saying, that's me, I need a new start. I need a new beginning. I need to be saved. I've been weary. I'm going through the battle of my life. But I need more faith right now. If that's you, all you have to do is just pray. And I'll lead you in a prayer right now to receive Christ if that's what you want to do. Or receive the faith of God, the strength. God will do this. Just repeat after me. Say, Jesus, Jesus. I ask you now to forgive me for my unbelief. Today I make a choice to make you the Lord of my life. Come into my heart and be my Lord. Be my Savior. I receive the free gift of eternal life. And Lord, fill me now with your faith and your power. I thank you, Jesus. I am saved. I'm born again. And your spirit lives in me. And now I can say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God bless you. If you said that prayer today, you're saved. You're born again. You have the faith of God. God bless you. Marco Garcia. What a blessing. What a blessing. A wonderful message. Before we leave here, Marco mentioned that we need to fight the good fight of faith. And that's found in 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter, and the 12th verse, and it says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. Faith. If you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes, that's faith, unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you've been saved tonight, call the number on your screen and let us know. Jesus loves you, and so do we. Good night.